Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon to chat a little bit about the Week of the Young Child, which we're going to explain in more detail in the coming hour that we have together. Um, I'm Nicole Medore. I'm the Early Childhood Specialist at our main Department of Education. I work on the early learning team there, and I'm going to pass it over to some of my teammates, and then we'll pass it over to um, Maine AEYC to introduce themselves. So Leanne, would you like to go next? I see you next. Your thing, Nicole. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Leanne Larson, and I'm the director of the early learning team in Maine's Department of Education. And it's really lovely to have all of you um, with us this afternoon. And I'm going to pass the um, baton to Sue Gallant. Hi, I'm Sue Gallant. I'm the pre-K expansion consultant with the early learning team at the Department of Ed. I work closely with Marcy Whitcomb, who hopefully will be joining us in a little bit. She's the public pre-K consultant. And it's exciting to have you all here with us. And this is an exciting opportunity to celebrate early childhood in our state. And I'm going to pass to Morgan Tolan. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Hi, I'm Morgan Tolan. I am currently the professional learning director at the Maine Association for the Education of Young Children, soon to be the co-executive director. Um, and we're really excited to have all of you here. Um, the Week of the Young Child is a national um, celebration from our national affiliate, NACI, um, and we're just excited to see it keep growing um, in Maine and all the interest in being involved really is really great. Thanks, Morgan. And Stacy, I don't want to put you on the spot. Would, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Another, a new team member for us. <laughs> Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Stacey McCoy, and I am the new Head Start Collaboration Director for the state of Maine. It's so nice to meet you all. Um, um, but this is my first week, <laughs> which is more about, but I have a big love for um, NAYC. I started out in child care a bazillion years ago and went through the accreditation process as a very young preschool teacher a million years ago. And love the week of the young child stuff so i'm just excited to be here and see what you guys have planned thanks stacy okay here we go with my slides give me just a moment Okay, so this year, uh, as we get ready to celebrate Week of the Young Child, um, my teammates and colleagues on the early learning team wanted to and have reached out to Maine AEYC. And so their organization in partnership with ourselves um, are what have teamed together to present this information to the field. Did my screen just shut off? It did. <laughs> are you my, in so sorry about that <laughs> my whole internet just shut, well, not my internet but my um chrome hold on give me just a second I'm gonna do you want me to you. share nicole my... and so, like, is I everyone able it. to see... <laughs> is everyone able to see that with the welcome yep yes Okay, so we're a team <laughs> and we're partnering. <laughs> and so uh, the information provided today um, is actually a team effort from our team at the Early Learning Department or the Department of Education Early Learning Team and Maine AEYC. Thank you. Go ahead, Sue. Passing it over to Morgan. Oops. Yep. <laughs> nope. Now there we go. go. <laughs> so, what is the week of the young child? So, this the Week of the Young Child started over 50 years ago um, from the National Association of the Education of Young Children, which is the world's largest early childhood education association. Um, so really the purpose of the Week of the Young Child is to bring public attention to on the needs of young children and their families and to recognize the early childhood programs in our communities. Um, so it's a fun-filled week of early learning, young children, um, their teachers, families, communities, there's daily themes. Um, and it's really about identifying the importance of early ed and care in our communities. Right. So let's take a look at the daily themes of the week. The first one is Music Monday. 
And typically programs start off with a kickoff that takes off on the Saturday that precedes this. But Music Monday is a chance to really explore music, doesn't require fancy instruments. So making instruments with your kids is a great way to celebrate this, partnering with local musicians, involving your partnership with your high school bands and other programs. Tuesday is Tasty Tuesday. It looks at celebrating cooking with children, doing so some programs do cooking projects, but that also weaves in a lot of science and math. Um, it's a great opportunity to partner with local restaurants, programs that support food security, like the backpack programs. And if you're in a school system, your school lunch ladies. Wednesday is Work Together Wednesday. And this really looks at working together and celebrating with children and teaching them problem solving skills, increasing their confidence and their ability to empathize and work collaboratively with teams. Lots of fun with STEM activities, but we also work with a lot of other agencies in early childhood. And that's a chance for us to partner for bigger projects on this day. Artsy Thursday comes in. Little ones love art and that process of making art. So we celebrate that on Thursday. It's a great opportunity to have a program art show, partner with a local artist, paint a mural or just decorate the playground with, play, with chalk. And Family Friday. This is a day that focuses on engaging and celebrating with families, recognizing that essential role they play as their child's first teacher and helping them learn ways that they can support children in their development at home. So ways to get involved. There are a lot of different things that you can do in your program. So planning community events. Some programs kick off with parades, as I said earlier, or they do programs within, within their, their day during the week. And Macy is offering mini grants to help you with those things. State House Day is coming up that week, and there's an opportunity to join ECE professionals across the state at the State House. That helps us get our, our mission and our word out to the legislative body and gives us a chance to celebrate all of the folks that are working hard in this field. And then planning weekly themed activities across the week, and then getting them out on social media. We'll have more on that sharing in a little bit writing a press release for your local newspaper to be shared, and then securing a week of the young child proclamation. And Morgan, I think you're gonna talk a little bit more about how yep. to go about doing that. Yep. Consider inviting local officials, and leaders to your program. You know, getting the town councilor, the local senator or congressman to come in to do a program visit and read with your kiddos, do an activity with them. Maybe they have a musical or artistic talent that they'd like to share or join you in a cooking project. All right. So Mamie UIC has some funds this year we want to use to help communities plan some events. Um, so we're calling these mini grants. There will be anywhere between $500 and $1,000. And so we're looking for people to apply to um, plan events with someone else in their community. So pulling in, whether it's a child care center and an elementary school working together or an elementary school working together with libraries and museums to plan something, we really want to um, focus on the community building and have it be more than one organization coming to us saying they wanna plan an event to bring public attention to the importance of early childhood years. Um, so we have an uh, application that's available until the 13th, and then we'll announce winners on the 17th, and we hope this gives the people the time to plan um, an event for the week of um, April 1st through 7th. And so if you go to the next slide, Sue, I have yep. some examples of um programs that were awarded mini grants last year. And the reasoning was because they brought together multiple organizations. Um, you can see Bitterford Ready worked. Um, they had a <clears throat> art show and school readiness fair that was really successful. 
um, Greenville, there was a childcare center in Greenfield that actually was about to close and they used their funds to have this whole community event and raised money, which was really cool to see. And then there was a family concert in York County and a, a town in Lemoyne did a book fair. So these are just some ideas to give you of what we're looking for. Um, they don't have to be exactly like this, but in the theme of community building, we really do want multiple organizations coming together. Any questions about that before we, well, we'll have a chance for questions at the end, but I don't know if anyone has one right now, they're welcome to ask. Okay. Um, and another exciting thing we're doing that week um, is on Wednesday, April 5th, we're doing our State House Day again. So last year, um, it was a really successful event where we got to do some tours of the State House. There was a press conference that Governor Mills spoke at. Um, we had these really fun t shirts. Um, it was just a really great event. And so we are doing it again this year. We're mo most likely going to be in the Hall of Flags this year. We used to do that in past years and are bringing that back. Um, so just save the date. We don't have a lot of details yet. We're kind of waiting to see how this legislative session goes to see what will be happening at the state house at that time to make some decisions. Thanks, Morgan. So last year in 2022, that was really the first year that the early learning team at DOE um, put together some really focused resources and examples of um, schools around Maine celebrating the week of the young child. Um, as many of you know, the Department of Education oversees public school education, and that can include um, well, the DOE oversees pre-K through 12th grade, but folks on our early learning team um, are looking to support schools with pre-K through third grade. And many of our pre-K classrooms do partner with community-based providers already. Many of those are Head Starts. Some of them are licensed private child care centers. Um, so we definitely cross paths with the private sector um, in those examples. So this year, it that's part of the reason why this year we wanted to start planning so much earlier to really um, improve on and celebrate those partnerships that are all working with the same students and the same families and the same communities. Um, so at the department last year, each day, some of you may have seen or recall, we made um, a, a short video. Each video was under 10 minutes um, to highlight what was happening around the state in public education um, according to each of the days. So Music Monday, Tasty Tuesday, Work Together Wednesday, Artsy Thursday, and Family Friday. Each of those are a link to a short video highlighting and celebrating examples that folks sent to us. Um, so there are photos, there's um, videos, there's additional resources. Um, I have to look at Family Friday additional resources. I'm not entirely sure why that's not linked at the moment. Um, so unfortunately, that's dead. But the others are alive and well. Um, and the photos here are some of the samples that we received. So we have Music Monday down in the lower corner. Um, this is an infant toddler program. I believe it was from one of our Head Starts. Um, and you can see that there's a uh, potentially family members and their children listening to music. The top picture was um, a sample photo of a family event. And then we see a student for Tasty Tuesday creating a recipe in her classroom, a group of students working together over an art project, and then additional students working together for some math and patterning. Um, so these are the sorts of things that we love to see at the department. Um, we're not in the field and with children nearly enough. So when we get examples like this, we really uh, just want to celebrate the work that's happening in the field. And this link to this website, um, we can provide it in the chat box. But if you're familiar with our early learning site at the Department of Ed's, it's main.gov slash DOE, and then early learning. Um, and there's uh, the professional learning and resources is where that information is. And this year we've added a new site, um, which is linked off of 
our early learning site as well. It's for the 2023 Week of the Young Child. So you can see the dates are there and it provides some additional information as well for our public school folks that are looking to get involved. Um, we do link to the National Association of, for the Education of Young Children as well as our main chapter. Um, we can check out some of their events that are happening, can visit other websites and check out there's a planning guide that can help um, some folks as they prepare for the week. Um, and then, of course, like Morgan explained, um, the mini grants that MAEYC is able to provide, there's an application here as well. And I saw that link go in the chat. Thank you, whoever did that. <laughs> you can go away. Oop. My space bar is a little touchy today. <laughs> So we want to encourage you to get out and spread the word. If you're hosting an event in your center or your school, if you're planning an activity, working with partners, be sure to snap a photo and share. And we want to offer some hashtags that we're using. The National Education Association for the Education of Young Children is using, using both the hashtag WOYC and WOYC 2023. Here in Maine, specific to the DOE, we'll be using the hashtag W-O-Y-C with Maine following that so that that will tag those posts together and we can share the work that's going on. So we hope to see lots of great posts out there and pictures of what you're doing because as Nicole said, we don't get to see enough of what the kids are doing out in your programs and classrooms. Anyway, so in line with the videos that they produced last year, we're going to be producing some new videos this year, but this year we're choosing to highlight early childhood education careers. And each day during the week, we're going to choose a few careers that line up with a the theme. So on Music Monday, we'll be highlighting early childhood professionals that work with music with children. That could be in our pre-K programs, a public school music teacher. It could be somebody who comes in like from music together down in the mid coast region comes in and does music with um, children in pre-k settings, public child, uh, private child care centers and day and family child care centers. It could be that we're looking at someone who teaches private music lessons and works with young children, but whatever that's going on and we'll be doing that going all the way through for each day daily theme we will highlight a few of the professionals that are working with children in that way. And there's two reasons for doing this. We really want to celebrate all of the folks out there who are doing the very important and very powerful work of supporting our young children and building that strong foundation. But we also, especially in this time when we're having a hard time getting enough professionals into the field, we want to inspire students who might be looking for their career path or those folks who are looking for a change and want to be able to just come and play all day. That's what we do, right? close and then do your work, um, but really inspire them to consider the field of early childhood education so that they can be part of building that future. So if you know someone who is working in enriching the lives of children in one of these areas, please feel free to reach out if you think that they should be highlighted and would be willing to be interviewed. I'm going out and starting interviews next week and would be really excited if you know folks, please reach out. Okay. If you click once, Sue, that it'll come up. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Perfect. So what we want to know, do you have a great idea? Okay, click again. Is something already in the works at your school or in your community? Click again. If so, we need you to let us know because you could win. <laughs> We're going to have a drawing. Um, uh, during the week of the young child. And so there'll be much more information coming out about this. Um, but we want to enter your name for a chance to win registration uh, for this year's early childhood conference that will be in October. Um, so if you ha have attended the early childhood conference in the past, then you know that it's a few days, two days full of really rich content. Um, it's a really fin phenomenal way to get some of those professional development hours as well as be among your peers. Um, I think this current 
session that we had last October 2022. Um, we had four or 500 folks attend each day. It was really, really um, motivating and encouraging to see so many early childhood professionals from our state come together in one space in person, live in the flesh. Um, and we had some really great breakout rooms and opportunities for folks to learn more about early childhood and how they can um, improve the quality of their programs, improve the quality of their own personal um, pedagogy. It was a really fantastic time. So we're doing it again um, in person this October. And if we can help get um, one or two individuals to go uh, on paid by us, um, then that would be really fantastic. So we're still working out some of the details as far as how to submit uh, your entry. Uh, more information will certainly go out through the Early Childhood Listserv, um, perhaps through the DOE newsroom, and linked on our sites that we have in the chat box and we've shared with you today. Um, so I know folks on our team are really excited to hear about your ideas and what's happening for the Week of the Young Child. Um, so the more that entries that we have, um, the, the more excited we'll be, I can tell you that, and, and the chance to win. So. Just wanted to give folks a heads up and to be on the lookout for more information as, as we get closer. And there are a variety of resources that are linked here in this um, slideshow, again, that will be posted. So Maine AEYC has a number of resources, including their planning guide, which is a great tool. NACI also has a variety of um, ideas on their website, the Department of Ed website, which we showed you. And then there is a piece here, Morgan, should I click on designing a Week of the Young Child proclamation? And can you talk a little about that? Yeah, I can talk about it. I just stuck it in the chat as well. So if you click on this, it is going to bring you to a page and it says 2022, but the content's going to be about the same year to year. A proclamation is just um, bringing public awareness to the week of the young child. And it's like a declared document either by your, it could be by Governor Mills, um, a mayor, a city council. Um, so this goes over like how to approach someone to do that. And then it's very like, I pronounce, whereas the week of April 1st is week of the young child. There's like just funny language that it has to be certain to be a proclamation. So all that's in there to help you um, know how to do that. But yeah, it says 2022, but that's okay. It will be fine for this year. Mm -hmm. get my... Now I did that and I'm not sure how to go back, but I think <laughs> we were at the question and answer slide. So yeah, I'm gonna so stop sharing. Just one more slide left. And that was just to encourage any questions or conversation that folks joining us today have. We're here, we're happy to navigate that for you. Um, or any folks on our team that anything we left out that you would like to add now would be a great time. Feel free to unmute or use the chat box as well. Is there a way to determine if any of these things are already in the works in our communities that we may or may not realize? That's a great question, Katie. Um... <laughs> you just have to reach out do some reaching out I'm not I don't have like an awareness right now of all the I think in the coming weeks we will I know we're trying to partner with all um, museums in Maine for family Friday to have free admission to all children's museums um so that's something you could reach out to a museum if it's if you have one near you um, or a library. Um, I don't quite have a list quite yet of all those. I do hope to at some point though. I would think if your community has a Facebook page, I might put an inquiry out there and that might be a way to reach um, folks like, hey, thinking about the week of the young child, anybody else started planning yet or interested in collaborating? And you might find that you can pull a group together. Yeah, I feel like I hear about it a lot in my work in the mm -hmm. the weeks very close to it right. <laughs> happening. Yeah, and then I see some really cool stuff when I'm in the field, but I'm not clued into the planning phase, <laughs> and not in my own community because I don't work in my own community. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
I think sometimes planning has happened a lot in a very short time leading up to it. And so we're hoping this year to get people thinking about it a little earlier with this session. Shy of watching all the videos, is there a list of like cool things that programs have done? Yeah, um, maybe not in Maine specifically, but one of the resources I stuck in the chat is from NACI and it kind of gives some cool ideas um, that you could do for weekly themes. I yeah. believe our planning guide does as well. Okay. Has a couple in there. Yeah, I see. Then, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Leanne. Oh, I was just going to say to piggyback on that, I know um, you saw the landing page for the Department of Ed's Week of the Young Child site. And um, shortly after the February vacation week, we're going to be posting a, a resource that will offer some different activities that you could do connected with the themes and links to uh, resources about those. So um, we have a a team working on that from across all all divisions within our department who are um, collaborating. So um, that's one piece that while we don't have it finished for today, it will be getting posted in the next month, within the next month. So just check back on that site and that might give you give, give you some other ideas. The, the other place that I have found um, stuff is the magical Pinterest um, in the past <laughs> in other programs and things like that, that I've gone in and said, so like, oh, I never thought of that connecting this this way. So um, I found a lot of great stuff that way also. Right. Uh, Flavia, go ahead. I see your hand raised. Do you have a question or something to add? Yeah, I actually, yeah, I have a question. So for us, for the main state parent ambassadors, this is our, the alumni group specifically. This is our first time applying for a grant. So I wonder if you had, guys had any tips. I'm hearing a lot of collaboration, but I wonder, like, is there any other tips for us as a first time grant writers that we should be looking out for? You mean specifically what to include in it or activities? If your grant application doesn't need to be that lengthy, quite honestly. We just okay. want an idea of the event you're planning, how many folks you hope to attend, and the organizations you hope to pull in into your planning with you. Um, so specifics about the event um, aren't like really <laughs> so important. We mostly want to know that you're collaborating with others and what the purpose of the event is and who you're inviting. Okay, that sounds good. That does takes that a help? lot of pressure. Yes, it does, because it takes <laughs> a lot of pressure because it's our first one and we're like overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, and we did our best last year to say like, if you requested 700 and we couldn't do that, we would say like, we can do 500 and we're gonna send you a bunch of water bottles too to give okay. out at your <laughs> event. So um, stuff like that, if we can't. Um, do okay. a that big money, yeah, money award. Yeah, that does help. Thank you. Yeah. Who are the individuals you would recommend connecting with? I'm assuming it's at the primary school level. Would it be the principal? Would it be the curriculum court? I mean, I I don't even know. Yeah, it's a good question, Katie. If to be perfectly honest, it probably varies by school because some schools have um, coordinators in place that are specific to coordinating pre-K programs, for example, and other schools, it's the administrators that take that role on. So um, I think the commonality across all of those are the secretaries. If you just call the school and say, hey, I am looking to find out more information about this or to talk to somebody about this, who might that be? And then they would say, oh, it's our lead teacher so-and-so or our principal so-and-so. Um, I think they would have a better idea. We're trying to get the word out, like we've been saying, early and wide. So hopefully um, the term week of the young child won't be anything new for, for folks in our public schools. Um, and, and to your point, yes, definitely it would include pre-K. Um, if we can get some kindergarten, first, second grade classrooms involved too, I would be 
thrilled with that. Um, historically speaking, and the examples that we have for those videos we made last year were primarily from pre-K programs though, yes. So on our site, there are, there is contact information. Um, so please feel free if something comes up later after today's meeting, a question or a thought that you wanted to run by any of us, um, we're always available via email or phone call um, to chat through that with anybody and everybody. Um, we are doing another informational session similar to this next week. Um, so if something comes up and you wanted to ask it in a larger group, you can always register for that. I want to say it is on the 9th, Thursday, um, in the afternoon around 1 o'clock. Um, so that would be another opportunity to. The information we're providing is the same, but the questions and conversation that come up could be different. So um, the more the merrier. Certainly don't want to make anybody stay. So we, we don't have any other information planned to share. So if folks have things that they need to get to, by all means, we will not be offended if you sign off. Um, but also happy to keep chatting. So I'm going to leave that up to you all.